Ron Paul told me, uh, if you want to change government, you got to become government. So, you know, one of the things that I did is I became a PC and became a uh, first vice district uh, chairman of LD4. And that's, that's when I first met Sheriff Richard Mack. Well, through the through this uh, all the freedom movement, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew I was mad. I got out there and started doing something, and uh, and I kept on hearing Sheriff Richard Mack. He's he's the America's last hope. And uh, anyways, so I finally got got to meet him. And uh, anyway, th this guy's great. He's a former two two uh, two term sheriff of Grand County. And he sued the Obama administration over the Brady Bill, took it all the way to the Supreme Court, and won. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I said, same difference. <laughs> anyway, uh, he uh, currently travels around the, the country educating the other sheriffs about their power to protect their uh, their citizens from the abuse of federal, uh, you know, the, the abuse of the federal government. His book, The County Sheriff, America's Last Hope, is that it talks about that very thing. Please welcome Sheriff Richard Mack. you in the audience have noticed a prejudice going on at this meeting? <laughs> the mic is conducive to short people. <laughs> Don't think I haven't been watching. <laughs> Charles Goyette and I, and probably Art Thompson now too. But, uh, I am so grateful to be here. I'm honored to be here. And by the way, I'm number 18. <laughs> Southern Poverty Law Center, number 18. Thank you very much. Uh, you have to look at that really closely. The reason Chuck Bubble is number one, it's in alphabetical order. So M is already M is always in the middle. But believe me, I'm just glad I made the list. I would have felt horrible if I hadn't made the list when they're branding all the other constitutional conservatives and, and uh, activists all across the country. But isn't it wonderful to be on a list? where you're a dangerous patriot of America. <laughs> uh, so, so that, um, when I was in Beaumont, California uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, <laughs> Maui, speaking to the Tea Party of Maui, I, that was really rough duty, but I told him I, told him I would sacrifice and come back again. Um, and Maui right before that, and then uh, Bangor, Maine right before that on uh, uh, 18, December 18th. I'll tell you just like I told all of them. So I can tell you honestly, from Maine to Maine to Honolulu, Hawaii, and I did one in Honolulu too, right before I did Maui, it's the same thing. We are after nothing that has anything to do with violence. This is not a violent revolution. It's a revolution, but it is not advocating violence in any way. And even though Time Magazine lied about me on, on, in the October 11th issue of 2010, saying that I actually advocate legal force against the federal government. That is an absolute lie. I want each of you to know that right up front. I have never in my life advocated violence against the, the government or a violent overthrow. This is a movement to find peaceful solutions. And I promise you, there are peaceful solutions available. And our duty as Christians and Americans is to find more than what is readily in front of us. We have peaceful solutions, and Nullify Now is an example of that. I believe in state nullification. I believe in jury nullification. And I certainly believe in sheriff nullification. And the one, when you talk about Nullify Now, the sheriff is the one that can nullify now. The jury has 
to wait until they get the case. The sheriffs don't have to wait. The, the state legislature, sometimes they have to wait till they meet. The sheriff doesn't have to wait to meet anything. He can do it now. If we get the sheriffs on board, this movement does two things. It remains peaceful and effective. And that's what we're about. Finding those peaceful means. A constitutional sheriff, have we ever had one in history? Maybe, I think so. I think we have some right now. But we also have, and three weeks ago today, I learned that a very good man was shot and killed in Tucson. His name was Judge John Roll. In that booklet that you were given just a minute ago, he's on page two because he was my judge in my case. He was the first judge to hear this case against the federal government. He was a good patriot. He was a good man. And uh, that day, an example came of what a constitutional sheriff is not. Sheriff Dupnik. He, shot, he showed us all and demonstrated what a constitutional sheriff is not. As we go through this in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you what a constitutional sheriff would be. But I also want you to know that I wasn't always a constitutional person. I wasn't, I wasn't raised in a constitutional home. Those of you who know my parents, I will honor both of them. Uh, my dad passed away about five and a half years ago. My mom is still alive, and they were good people. But uh, the Constitution wasn't part of our life, and I wasn't raised a, a constitutional right-wing nut. Okay? Uh, but I got converted to that later, and while I was a police officer, um, I started my police career in Provo, Utah, and I came to a point where I realized that people that I was writing tickets to were not in the wrong. I was. And I decided that I was going to quit my job, quit my chosen profession, or start all over. And so I decided to start all over. And how do you do that as a cop? I've already been a cop for three and a half years. How do you start all over? I didn't know. But I knew I was looking for something and I ran smack into the face of the oath of office. And I looked at the oath of office and I said, I'll be darned. I actually swore in God's name that I would uphold and defend the United States Constitution. I told myself that's probably not possible if you've never read it. <laughs> so, I decided that I would start reading the Constitution, even while I was on duty. I had the World Book Encyclopedia. I didn't have, nobody, and I don't know where Bliss 2 was at the time. This was back in 1983, Bliss, and nobody had given me one of these yet. So I don't know. So I, I had this great big old book in my patrol car, the World Book Encyclopedia. I would have much rather had this. But I didn't even know these existed. So. Uh, and so I was uh, starting to love the Constitution, and any time I wasn't on a call, I was reading the Bill of Rights in the Constitution. And then another miracle happened in my process of constitutional conversion. A notice came uh, at the Provo Police Department Bulletin Board of a constitutional seminar sponsored by the state of Utah, Utah Post. And it was called Constitutional Studies for Law Enforcement Officers. Some, some of you should get a hint right then what this is, who this was by. And I looked at the bottom and it was Dr. W. Cleon Skousen. And he had actually worked in the FBI with my father. And so I said, I'm going to go to that. And I went to it and was at the University of Utah and 240 cops were at that seminar. And I don't know what happened to the other 239, but this one was converted. Heart and soul by this powerful man, and I'm going to tell you, uh, Dr. Skousen didn't look very intimidating physically. And he wasn't a very good looking man. But he spoke with the power of God. And I learned that in those two days that I spent with him, I learned that the spirit of freedom was the same thing as the spirit of God. 
And I will never forget the power that I felt from that man. And I will never forget another oath I took while I was sitting there in the audience, very similar to this right here. I said, I will never be on the wrong side again. And I went on. I went on with my career. I, uh, uh, even though I had a reputation as being that constitutional cop, I still got promoted and, and things were going very well in our lives. And you know what happens when things are going well in your life. The in-laws call. And they did. And they uh, were trying to lobby me and talk me into moving to Safford, Graham County, uh, to our hometown where both my wife and I are from, and run for sheriff of Graham County. And I said, you know, that's something I would really like to do after I retire here. They said, no, we can't wait that long. And uh, they were kind of in this nullify now way, you know. And uh, so there was no way I was going to do it. There was just no way. And my wife would now defend me with them. And this is the first time in our married lives that she agreed with me that her parents were nuts. <laughs> uh, we're not going to do this. And uh, so she would tell them, leave Richie alone. He's not going to move this to Arizona. Forget it. And uh, then they had other people lobbying me, you know, my old uh, junior high basketball coach and some other people saying the same thing. So finally, we just sat down and wrote down all the pros and cons as to why we could not do this. And there was about 23 reasons why we could not do it. And only two reasons why it might be nice. And that was basically just be closer to, to the grandparents for our kids. And both my parents and her parents lived there. And we sent it down to them so they would read it and leave us alone. And uh, about three weeks later, we moved home and ran for sheriff. <laughs> And I really don't know any more about it than that. We, we did. And I still look back at it and say, why did we do that? And uh, it, it became a little bit clearer. Uh, after I was elected in 1988, I was re-elected in 1992. And then somebody in Washington, D.C. started lying about the Brady Bill. And President Clinton, I know that's a shock to you. Uh, President Clinton actually said this, when he signed the Brady Bill into law, he said, the Brady Bill would make our streets so safe that our cops would not even need to wear guns anymore. Okay, you tell them to take them off, Bill. And so, I wasn't going to sue over that, and I, I didn't even care. I thought, well, it's just another bunch of Bill Clinton propaganda. But then on January 21st, 1994, we had a Sheriff's Association meeting here in Phoenix. And there's only 15 counties in Arizona, as you know. There was 12 sheriffs at the meeting. Uh, Dubnik was not there. And, uh, he, uh, you know, 